This episode of Finding Demo Surf Fishing is being brought to you by The Sinker Guy. Head on over to thesinkerguy.com and take a look at all the stuff that Chip's got going on in the Sinker Guy garage. Need sinkers? They're in his name. I mean, it's right there. Just order them. I always use them. I love them. Sputniks are great. You need terminal tackle, gear, equipment. Yeah, he's got you covered there too. He's also got a line of rigs that are well known and very, very good. You got the Bruno. We don't talk about Bruno. And with that, you got the Uno, but you got also other rigs too to get your hands on for all types of fishing. Again, go over to thesinkerguy.com, take a look, get your order in today. Great customer service. You won't be sad. Ah, yes, new week, new episode. Actually, this episode y'all been wanting for a while. This is a uh, this is gonna be a little weird. I am joined by my little miniature, I don't know, my offspring. <laughs> I am joined by AJ, my daughter Abby. She's gonna be interviewing me for episode one hundred. Man, my audio is all jacked up. You can tell I haven't been doing this much, huh? Yeah, it's it's this episode's been in the making for a while now, and you know I, I've been kind of avoiding it and avoiding it and avoiding it. But finally, y'all were like, "Look, stop it, knock it off, get in here and do this damn episode. We want to hear about you." So I convinced her to go ahead and do the podcast questions, which is it's it's good, it's good. She's gonna she's gonna do fine. She really is. <laughs> she <laughs> she's kind of shrugging. So uh, well, your mic's on. So without further ado. AJ, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you. <laughs> so, you guys see uh, a lot of times we fish together. Obviously, we go to tournaments. We do a lot of that stuff all together. Uh, yeah, she's she caught her first limit of pompano before I did. Actually, I did. You did. Well, I don't know. No, you caught your first limit. I thought I might have. Yeah, you probably did. It was that tournament. That's right. It was yeah. the one before when I went out with uh, Tony and the guys. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely got your limit before me because you started going out fishing before I went with you. Yeah, that's true. But then you started going fishing with me. <laughs> <laughs> before I ask, before I let you ask me questions, what's one fun fishing memory for you with us? That is a hard question. I've got a lot of memories. I know, but what's well, the first one that comes to your mind? Catching my first redfish. Oh, that, that was, was a good that day. was fun. That was cool. That was really fun. You 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 nailed that one. <laughs> it was that, a fun fight. That was it. Uh, where were we? That was Pickens. Was it? Yeah, it was four pickings. I remember you're like, I think it's a pompano. And all of a sudden, it's like, it's a red. And you're like, it's a red? <laughs> and you just, I was excited. You got you you started reeling a lot faster after that. I was like, no, don't let it go. And we caught a couple that day. We caught two, right? Yeah. You caught one and I caught one. Yep. And Mr. Matt and uh, Braden were down the other end mm-hmm. of the beach. That's right. Yeah. That was a fun day. That really was fun. We, we've had some good fishing memories. If you guys have followed any of the lives or any of the uh, social media stuff, you'll be able to see one of her recent catches. It was that Spanish mackerel, the bluefish on the on the seven footer. That was a fun fight. Spanish mackerel was fun. Yeah, yeah, you crushed that one. That's on that was that gold GI jig, I think it was. Yeah, that too. one. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, uh, this is going to be really weird for me to go ahead and give you controls of this. Uh, <laughs> I don't like. Really, I don't know what to do with my hands right now. You, you got it, kiddo. All right, so. You you ask what you you ask the questions. I'm gonna answer them as best I can. So okay. go for it. Open it up and let's fire. Um, what first got you into fishing? Oh, so fishing, fishing. You think or like here? Surf fishing here. Surf fishing here, Tony. Mm-hmm. Fish guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy one. Um, so you remember when we were in Grammy's house in Tennessee? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I remember how we had nothing to do because of the plague. Uh huh. <laughs> I was just sitting in my room a lot. That's for sure. Well, I ended up going down a YouTube hole, and somehow I got onto surf fishing, and the first channel I came across was Tony's Fish Gum. Mm -hmm. And then after Tony's uh, channel, then it became Matt Isbell's Bama Beach Bum. Mm -hmm. Went out and basically just studied it, and then lo and behold, we ended up moving here to Navarre, (laughs) and I bumped into Mr. Tony at Walmart. Remember that? I was like, Oh, yeah, I remember that. I was like, huh, he's a lot taller. (laughs) (laughs) He is. He's a giant. He's what six five? Yeah, he he's he's a tall man. I don't know. 
I know. He towers over you. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of your friends do. Well, I mean, you're almost, you're, you're getting I'm there. I'm five two. You're five two. You are. I'm short. <laughs> you're 13, dude. <laughs> I know plenty of 13-year-olds who are a lot taller than me, that's oh, for sure. Oh, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, <laughs> be, don't let comparison take away your joy. Live your life. Don't worry about them. But yeah, those two are what got me into surf fishing pretty much. And then when we moved here, I just started. That's cool. Yeah, it was fun. It's been fun ever since. It's only gotten crazier. <laughs> and Tony was there the day we caught our first pompadour. I'm not going to lie. It's a little hard to remember that. That was Brick House. We were at Brick House oh, yeah, after the that. storms. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was a good time. All right, what you got? What's your favorite thing about fishing? <laughs> um, I, I, I go with the relaxation of it. I mean, it's a lot of fun to catch. That is probably one of the coolest parts because in the end, that is everything that you planned for, everything that you did, all the other stuff, it, it, all, came, it all came together and you caught a fish. So that was a win. Um, when I'm fishing with you, though, it's when you catch because I, I've said this numerous times on the show, um, we'll go fishing and you'll have the iPad. But I know when you have the iPad, you're looking at the rods every couple seconds and you're checking and you're moving around. I'm excited to catch some fish. I know you are. (laughs) (laughs) But when I've seen you, um, when the rod wiggles, I've seen you put the iPad down and get ready to run. And you're you're always, (laughs) I know you always want to get to the rod first. It won't be hard now, now that I'm hobbled. But yeah, for me, it's watching you reel in a fish and the smiles and, and just seeing all the things change for you. And for me, it's just the relaxation and the joy of it all together, really. Um, what is a bucket list fish for you? Like one that you really want to catch? Ooh, that's a long list, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say now it's a rooster fish. What's that? I haven't sent you the, I've never showed you the pictures of the rooster fish. I don't think fish. so, no. Oh my goodness. I feel like I failed as a father. <laughs> you have not. Oh, I'm failing here. Well, it's a good thing we have the computer up mm-hmm. so you can see what they look like. I've heard of it. Never seen it though. Yeah. There it is. Oh boy. Look for that co- is a scary looking fish. <laughs> It looks poisonous. No, no, it's not. But it's pretty cool with that hair, right? That is really cool looking. Yeah, that's on that's on the list. Um, yeah, for I mean that's on the big list, and then I've got plenty of local ones I want to catch. But you know, for now, that one will have to do. <laughs> What's a dream place for you to fish? Ooh, Australia. Australia? Yeah, you said that a couple times. Yeah, Australia, and probably I'd love to go to Panama. Yeah. Remember we did the Panama Canal? I think I remember that, yeah. I'd hope you remember the Panama Canal. It was a 15-day cruise, dude. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> that was a uh, that was a make-up 10-year anniversary trip, and then <laughs> poor AJ got dragged along, and oh, she was so no, sad. I was in kids' club most of the time. You were. Yeah, you were. You, you have it really rough when you go on a Disney cruise. Totally do. <laughs> <laughs> um, can you share memorable surf fishing stories? Um... Like unexpected catches or like challenging fish. There's no one expected. I expect to catch every time. You know that. <laughs> like an unexpected fish to catch. Uh, geez. Um, I know one of my favorite memories. I got a couple that are here specific. Uh, remember after Sally, the first time I started fishing and I brought mm-hmm. home that red for the first time? Yeah. That was, that was one of the great ones. But you catching your first red drum, that was a huge, huge core memory for me. Like that, that just... That's icing on the cake for me. That, that's such a great memory. I, I'll always love that memory. And that picture is always, yeah, that, that one That one makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you catch a flounder at one point? I caught a couple. Yeah. And they're completely on accident. I'm never <laughs> targeting flounder, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not from the surf. Um, yeah, that one was pretty good. Um, that's been pretty much it, kiddo. I mean, just really the catches here. Um, the Jack Creval was a cool one. I wish you'd have been out there for that. That was a monster fish. That was a heck of a fight. What's that look like? Uh, that one kind of looks like a giant pompano, but skinnier. Yeah, it's, they're, they're kind of goofy looking. (laughs) (laughs) I want to have that as a pet. You want to have as a pet? (laughs) It looks cute. A pumpkin. They're not exactly tiny. (laughs) But it's cute. It's cute. I want it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else? How do you usually set up your gear? Like, where do you cast? Uh, okay. So, when we go out, I normally have between three and four rods. Uh, normally, I bring... There are all, there's all the... It's going to be the two 12-foot daggers, the one over-the-bar bullet or this Florida Surf Tackle Bullet, and then number three will depend. It'll either be 
the real 30A 10 footer or it'll be the beach runner. And then what I'll do is uh, Blake Hunter taught me a kind of a cool trick and you see me do it all the time. I'll throw one short and the next one I'll throw a little longer then a little longer and then a max cast. Um, And then once I figure out where they're biting, I'll bring all the rods in and go to that line with two, three or all four rods. It all just depends on if if you're there or if I'm not, you know, how we do it. If you're there, I'll put all four right there so we can both catch. But if uh, it's just me, I'll probably do two and then two or three and then I'll put the other ones in another zone to probably catch. What's the best type of rig for you? Ooh, (laughs) that's this has actually changed. So you always see me use double drops. You always see me use pompano rigs, right? I haven't really memorized what rigs you use, but That's true. usually, yeah. So I normally use double drops, um, but lately I've been moving more towards Carolina rigs. I've noticed that, and I've shown you, I've shown you those, the single mm-hmm. hook longs. But both are good, so I, I like them both. Uh, it kind of depends on what I'm doing. If I'm going after whiting and up close, uh, I love a Carolina rig. I've done it with pompano, kind of close. Uh, it, it's okay. The double drop is good, but a single drop, and I'm, I'm moving more towards single drops versus double drops now. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no point. I'm, I don't plan on catching two at the same time. <laughs> it's it's there's just so much more work. <laughs> so I know it's stupid, but uh, yeah, I'm moving more to single drops. That's cool. Um, what is the best kind of sinker? Sputnik. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you know I love my Sputnik. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I will use a Sputnik probably nine times out of ten. If I'm using a Carolina rig, depending on the current, um, I may switch to a cannonball. Um, if I know there's not a lot of current or if I'm fishing a rip and I'm trying to do something a little different to get it into the rip, mm-hmm. then I'll probably use a cannonball or a bank sinker. Yeah, they just roll better into that zone and they hold kind of. It's just all I wanted to do is get to a certain place and just kind of stay there. <laughs> But yeah, if, uh, nine times out of ten, uh, I've got a sinker guy Sputnik on, hands down. It's always on there. You always see those. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> well, we did that. Ca- well, I did the casting thing, and I. But when we first started, I wrote that article on casting distances, and I mean, I did what arrowheads, frog tongues, cannonballs, Sputniks, banks, and uh, and pyramids, and. The Sputnik outcasted everything by 20, 20 yards. I mean, it was great. The cannonball kept close, but the cannonball wouldn't hold. So, and the frog tongues were cool, but they don't hold. So, uh, holding's important. So, yeah, I stick I stick primarily with Sputniks. So they just do the job that I want. I didn't mean about the mic. <laughs> yeah, you're good, dude. Don't even worry about it. Um, what are some effective strategies for surf fishing at night? And what safety precautions should um, most people use to take during nighttime fishing? Ooh. Nighttime. Headlight. Headlight. Definitely. Headlight. Headlight. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> One that does red and white. Um, red lens is good for the turtles and all that piece there. Uh, that's that's very important. Uh, safety, stay out of the water as much as possible. I mean, you don't really need a reason to go in there. A lot more catfish and other things like to come out at night. So I, I don't think it's even worth going in the water for that. Um know what the sand was like before you got there yeah you got to kind of pay attention tourists love to dig holes and not fill them in so hopefully you knew where they were beforehand and kind of uh i I absolutely highly i can't recommend this enough get rod tip glow in the dark yeah those are really helpful yeah yeah you those those are fun when we use them they're fun and that set we have i mean i can cast with them they never come off it's kind of fun just seeing it wiggle while the rod's going off it really is yeah, that's that's never never a bad go right there. Um, what are some effective bait and lure choices for surf fishing, and what difference? Sorry, what different bait types attract uh, different species of fish? Okay, so I prefer uh, all my rigs will have fish bites on, mm-hmm. hands down. I absolutely won't fish without that. Um, so fish bites goes on, and that catches just about everything I've caught. <clears throat> Jack Creval, uh Pompano, red drum, black drum, whiting, uh, bluefish, ladyfish, catfish. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody (laughs) likes catching catfish. Eh, I mean, come the zombie apocalypse, I'll eat them. Uh, They're fine. They don't taste bad. They're just whatever. They're just more work than they're worth. (laughs) Um, So fish bites is my primary. My secondary bait after that would be crab knuckles. 
I yeah, have, I've seen you use those a lot. Yeah, after Chip showed me that, uh, I was really hooked on it. That's been one of my primary baits. Uh, and then shrimp. Uh, actually, sand fleas would be my next, followed by shrimp. And uh, unfortunately, ghost shrimp comes in last just because there's so much extra work into getting them, and I can never keep them alive long enough that it works. So uh, they're a phenomenal bait. I just don't like them. The shrimp usually falls off pretty fast, I've noticed. The ghost shrimp or the regular shrimp? Ghost shrimp. Oh, yeah, ghost shrimp goes off. But, but, <laughs> um, I just learned a new technique for that, and that's going to come out in another podcast episode. So stay tuned for that. There's going to be some fun on that. A new way to make sure we don't lose ghost shrimp nearly as much. What are the essential gear and tackle needed for a successful fishing trip, and how how can people choose the right equipment for their needs? That's a tough one. <laughs> and it's funny that you, it, it's weird that you're reading these questions because I read them I'm like, yeah, what are you going to say? And now I'm like, oh crap, now I have to answer that. <laughs> um, essentials, uh, essentials really boil down to, I think, the angler. Um, for me, I know that I'm going to need my rods, my rigs, my rig bag, so I have spares, my sinkers, my sputniks, my fish bites, um, and then my Batman belt. <laughs> <laughs> Have we officially dubbed it the Batman I belt? I mean, that's what they started calling it. The guys called it that, and it just stuck. Um, so I carry a pouch on my right side. It's got my pliers, my fish grips, a knife, and I think that's it. Uh, I used to actually know my my brain spike is still in that. Yeah, so. I remember you have that in there. Yep, yeah. If I catch them, I want to I want to spike them real quick. I want to mm-hmm. get them dead and in, in the water. Like I. I follow that EKG may as you'll, much as I can. You also usually have your towel on that as well, usually. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or to your belt. Yeah, I do have that one, huh? But yeah, it's uh, <laughs> that kind of gear is kind of the importance for me. Um, you, you can bring as much as you want. It just depends on what you want to do. Uh, if it's just me going out, like if I'm going to ditch you guys or you didn't want to go fish, I might just go a backpack route, in which case it's an ice pack in the backpack. Mm-hmm. The same things, a rig bag, weights, and all that. Yeah, a couple of sand spikes, and there we go. If it's you, me, we're going out big, and then it's the cooler, the cart, the yeah, bucket, the everything. flag. <laughs> I mean, we're bringing the whole kit and caboodle. And the umbre- umbrella, because I'm going to get sunburned. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really excited to go fishing with you, by the way. I am too, dude. I'm looking forward to going out there. Sauce. Sauce. I know. Sauce. I know. <laughs> Just kayaking, I got, I got a pretty bad burn, so I'm definitely saucing. What did we learn? To not to. <laughs> <laughs> that's my girl <laughs> um did i answer all that i think i did did mm. i leave out anything no i don't think so all right well, did I... you answer the how they can choose the right equipment oh yeah no i didn't answer that good call so choosing equipment goes back to what i said kind of it kind of goes back to the choices mm-hmm. um you could be Hell, you and I, you've seen it. We can go in a half hitch and spend $1,000 if we really wanted to. But Mostly on my sunglasses, because <laughs> I always either break them or lose them. They weren't that bad. You haven't got into, like, Costas or anything. So No, nah, give me some cheap ones. I'll be happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it kind of it really does boil down into your choices. So, I mean, if you're going to go out and surf fish, the biggest things I say is you need a rod and a rod and a sand spike. I mean, if you want to hold the rod, go for it. Um, most people, if you're coming down here just to relax and hang out, you're probably going to want a sand spike to just, you're going to go to one spot and sit in that spot and that's going to be your spot. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're not going anywhere. Um, if you want to move, you know, have, have a easy form of movement. Um, you know, a beach cart with the soft wheels, the rubber wheels, you know, the, the beach tires, that makes a huge difference. Don't go out there with like regular wheels. You're going to be hating life. Oh, you'll be hating so much life. <laughs> this just randomly popped into my head. What? what else can you use other than a sand spike in your hands to hold the rod? Like if you haven't got a sand spike. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could use your chair, I guess. Yeah, if you got like a cup holder or something. <laughs> a cup holder might be funky. That's but yeah, true. You, you could, <laughs> I mean, there's there's ways. I mean, I've also, uh, the daggers have such a skinny body mm-hmm. on the bottom that I know I could put it in the sand. Like yeah. I could drive the rod into the sand easily. I couldn't do that with the beach runner. It's got that bubble butt thingy, mm-hmm. the rubber ball. I yeah, the one, the one at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't work. That's always so frustrating to get into the cart. <laughs> That's, yeah. Well, we, we fixed it after I took that the covers off that mm-hmm. one. They go in a little easier. And then the other, the angle ones, that they se- it seems to go into that. Yeah. But we haven't taken that rod out in a while. That, that rod's been stuck in the garage, sadly. I definitely know my favorite rod. Which one? Lady Dagger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you do love your lady dagger. <laughs> it's my first, actually, my rod. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, <laughs> it is 100% yours. I mean, we, anytime we fish with it, it's I set it up for you and you alone. So, but yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, did it, you find what works for you. Find the minimums and then grow from there. I mean, we started out, I, I started out with 11 footer, a 10 footer, and I made it work and figured it out from there and just grew. And that's all it's been is just growing, figuring out what works. And then, you know, I had enough money to buy some stuff and bought some more stuff and <laughs> keep buying stuff, <laughs> keep buying stuff. <laughs> Until you spent a fortune. I have not. Don't tell your mother. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when you go fishing in a new place? Uh, don't. <laughs> no um so if i was gonna go fish somewhere new uh i'd like to walk the area i want to see what the beach looks like if i can't do that then i'm gonna go talk to locals or the local tackle shops um it's kind of like remember when we went to grammy's house or yeah granny's house yeah i remember that so then we went to the air force beach down there or the beach down by the air force base pretty sure I remember it was, that. The, it was the gray sand oh uh, yeah and you had the slaughter day you caught the sheep's head from the surf I think I remember that. Okay. So like that one. Isn't that the black and white one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Yeah, I remember one. that. Yep. I don't know why, but for some reason, I thought that you caught that. No, you reeled it in. We were busy that day. We, we caught were. a lot of fish that day. What are they called? Croakers, are they? Yep. Yeah, we caught a ton of croaker. Yeah. <laughs> a ton it's always croaker. funny hearing them. I love <laughs> I love it. the Do sound. It. No. Make the sound. Uh-uh. <laughs> I can't make the sound. <laughs> I want to sound like a dying zombie. <laughs> yes you're dying over there <laughs> that's pretty good actually a dying zombie i'm not gonna be able to th- it sounds I- like either a dying zombie or a purring cat <laughs> okay there you go um yeah we caught a ton that day but um what i did when i first went down there i stopped at the local tackle shop and i asked them some questions about mm-hmm. the area what was biting what timelines and then when i got to the beach i started looking for rips and holes um so i started scouting it and then i found a spot that i kind of liked and i fished it and it yielded perfect. It got me the fish I wanted, you know, and I got all that stuff for Uncle Johnny for him to have some and Granny. Um, and that's been one of my go-to places when I go back. I just alternate, you know, change the zone by a couple hundred yards here or there. But yeah, I'm looking for I'm looking for signs, looking for all those holes, rips, currents, waves, how they're moving, what they're doing, and of course I'm looking for humans. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some space, people. <laughs> but hey, before you ask me the next question. You know what time it is? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Time for a bait check. It is your first bait check of the episode. Reel that line in, make sure it's good. And how convenient, we were just talking about it. This bait check is being brought to you by Ninja Tackle. NinjaTackleVA.com is a website where you can find yourself a great set of Ninja Dagger rods. I love them. I have the 7-footer up to the 12-footer, uh, all in between. AJ has the Lady Dagger, her 11-footer. She loves it. She she absolutely loves that rod. Um, you need rigs? He's got them. Uh, what about bait? Yep. Maybe you want some other rods or reel combos. Yeah, they got them. He's got it all. It's such a great place to go. If you're into firearm and firearm accessories, yep, he's got you covered there. Ninja Tactical. Lots of good stuff there in the shop. And it's ninjatackleva.com. Great place to go. Matt will take care of you, I promise. It's a great, great guy. Now that we're back... <laughs> And I didn't hit my buttons right. Uh, what you got? Um, this one just popped into my head. Okay. Not written down or anything. Go for what it. is the best time of day to fish? Oh, for... Because I know you don't like fishing at night unless we're going in the evening. Yeah. So I like the sunset bite personally, but that's because I don't like waking up early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> God, I hate getting up early. Like usually for fishing tournaments, we get up stupid early. We do. Yeah, we're going to be out there all day grinding. Ugh. Well, no, not so much actually. We changed it up the last couple times. We did. Remember, we got up in the morning, we fished till about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, yeah. then we came off the beach, went and had lunch, got ourselves cleaned up, mm-hmm. hung out around the house, and then went back out for the evening bite. Yeah. So. Um, that definitely makes it a little easier. Yeah, especially on you. Because <laughs> it forces you to actually sauce and come eat <laughs> and not eat all the snacks. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, my daughter is a snack. Shush. She's a care package vulture, man. She gets the yeah, snacks and she they're gone. <laughs> I am. Car trips, it's the worst. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm a little bit better. I'm getting better at car trips. That's fair. You are. I don't always ask for food. You don't. You don't. I'll give you that. 
I appreciate that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go evening. Uh, morning bite is good. So sunrise till about nine is uh, about the morning time, about as much as I'll go. And then the evening bite right before sunset into darkness, right before to the point where I can't see the rod tips anymore before, without light. Uh, those are my primaries. Um, how do you adjust um, tactics for fishing when the bite isn't on fire? Move, 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 move. Yeah. Change places. It's we usually a, do that. Yeah, it, it, it's easy to grow roots and stay in one spot all day, um, especially when you're feeling defeated and you just don't want to do anything anymore. Uh, it's pretty depressing. But yeah, get up and move. Change spots. 100 yards down the beach. Wait 10 minutes, you know, stay it there for 20, 30 minutes. No hits. Move to another 100 yards, another 100 yards. Or if some place looks better, jump on that, go there, and then, you know, just continue on. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> How can anglers target a, spe- uh, a specific uh, fish species in the surf, and what are some tactics for catching popular game fish like striped bass, redfish, or pompano? Yeah, striped bass—that'd be nice. That's <laughs> gonna be when we go up north. Um, seasons, seasons is kind of a big deal, yeah, and where you're at. So, in our area, we're fortunate; we can catch reds almost year-round. Uh, pompano for the most part year round whiting when they're here year round but once you start getting into like the game the big game fish and all the other ones then you need to get a little bit more tricky so um, pompano and whiting are a lot of times bottom feeders uh, so I know I'm going to target the lower water column if I want bluefish I need to use cut bait uh, jack of all same thing mm-hmm. the toothy critters they want they want meat <laughs> <laughs> so is that usually when you use the crab knuckles or the shrimp um, no, I'll normally, move, at that point, uh, well, the crab knuckles will get hit by red drum and black drum, and the pompano will grab them too. Whenever you're using sand fleets, what do you go, what are you going after for that? Normally reds and palms. Okay. Those, that's the prime, and, well, permit, but I haven't caught one of them. <laughs> um, but yeah, to target it, it's really about what the bait choices are. Knowing what you want to go after, you know, like I just said, pompano and all those ones, I'm going to use that, but bluefish or something that's got teeth that I, I want to fight with, then, you know, cut a cut piece of whiting or bonita uh, will make a huge difference. Fish bites works too, you know, synthetic bait. That'll work as well, but it the, the toothier critters like to get their hands on some meat, so mm-hmm. I'll normally go that route. What are the top surfing... S- surfing? <laughs> surf, <Hey-o>. Not surfing. <laughs> well. What are the top surf fishing mistakes to avoid, and how can anglers continuously improve their skills and knowledge in this exciting form of fishing? <laughs> yes, I'm aware I said surfing. No, it's fine, pumpkin. Uh, it's funny that you bring that up, though, because mistakes, uh, I make them every time I go out. But I think the common ones I see are the people that come here to surf fish that try to fish like they're bass fishing. Mm-hmm. Um, casting. Remember in the beginning, like, <laughs> I couldn't cast for, I, I could not get it out there. I had to walk way out to cast it for that first pomp. Remember I had to walk that sandbar? I'm like, do, 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 It was so embarrassing. Um, but yeah, uh, casting is a different game. You need to learn how to cast with a surf rod. And it's not in the wrist. It's in the left hand. If you're right-handed, you're going to pull the rod more. Yeah, I remember you teaching me that. Yep. To, like, pull and. That's right. Yep. That's we, the word push, yep. right? Yep. Couldn't get my brain to start braining. Well, we're gonna we're actually gonna try some new stuff that I picked up this year from Tommy Farmer and a couple others uh, okay. to try to help you get some more distance out there. But uh, realize what you're you know you're fishing for that. Uh, the one I'd say with sinkers is if you're gonna throw a four ounce sinker, you better be ready to you know, catch it. I guess it's gonna snap. Yeah, I mean that by like this. If you're throwing twenty pound liter. You probably don't want to throw above a three ounce something. You don't really want to throw above a three ounce sinker. Um, the rule of thumb, from what I remember one time reading, was for every one ounce is ten pounds uh, on your fishing line, mm-hmm. unless you have a shock leader. And if you have a shock leader, you're you're kind of in the clear. Um, when we first started fishing, I just did braid right to the rig. That, I remember that, that yeah. And I would lose a ton of sinkers that mm-hmm. way. And then I switched it to now I have a mono shock leader and I can throw six, seven ounces of weight with my 20 and 30 pound rigs. It's a little easier. So um, don't over that one. And you don't have to cast 120 yards every time. There's a ton of fish in the first 50 yards. So just work your way out. Uh, that'll, that'll get you there. And don't use a whole damn piece of shrimp. <laughs> it's, 
you kind of sling it off and nothing's going to want to go for it. Cut the shrimp down into small pieces. You know, just you, you don't need it as big as you think you do. Uh, these fish will eat a one ounce, or I'm sorry, a one aught circle hook. You'll, you will catch some monsters. I mean, I use a size six hook, which is tiny in reality. And I can catch, I've caught 30 inch plus red drum on it. No problem. It holds. So you, you don't need to go as big as you think you do. It's you don't overkill it. That's going to kill you. Question from me. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's your worst mistake with fishing? That one was when I was using straight leader to the braid. That okay. was probably one of my worst ones because uh, I really thought I was being smart <laughs> <laughs> by minimizing that piece. And I mm-hmm. thought, oh, this is going to work. Um, it didn't. It didn't. I mean, it did. Uh, it, it did once <laughs> I up. I, well, it did once I changed things around. Like uh, I was using twenty pound rigs from myself, and then from rig makers. And then I got sick of losing sinkers and getting butt hurt about it. And then I finally said, "Fine, watch this." And then I started tying thirty pound, uh, thirty pound rigs. I stopped losing sinkers. So I was like, "Nope, this is how I'm doing it." Um, where in reality, if I'd have just put a shock leader on and I'd shut up about it, I'd have been fine. So, <laughs> yeah. What did we learn, Brian? To not to. Yeah, that was brilliant. All right. Do you want to do some questions from the listeners? Then? Yeah, that's good. What you got? I got one from Heat Hooks. Okay. What is one rod setup to always keep in the car? Ooh. Well, for me, it's going to be, if I had one that I'd keep constantly, it'd be the seven foot dagger, the travel rod. Because I know I can throw that one, I can throw a one ounce t- uh, jig with that, or I could do a double drop I, as long as I got that. I can throw that out and fish with it, whether I'm at the surf or freshwater at the, <laughs> or over at Wahoo. Remember when we went to the stadium? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can throw it there. That that rod will go just about anywhere with me and work. It's perfect. And if like Mr. Mike wanted to go, uh, he's like, hey, we're going in the boat. But I could run down real quick from the car and just do that, grab that. Check. <laughs> I need to find a, a flat space. I need a flat surface. Oh, that's funny. All right, what you got? Um, I've got one from Rogue Reels. Is that what it is? Yeah, Rob. Okay. Um, what fishing gear is always in your vehicle with you? Uh, I mean, uh, rig bag, seven foot dagger, um, and. With the rig bag, I've also probably I've got my lure bag, and that's going to have ES lures, uh, GI jigs, beach bum out, beach bum lures. Love the beach bum ones, and uh, my Island X ones. I've got those are my f- my four primary. Those are my four primary lures in there, and then, and then always bait. So I always have fish bites, uh, electric chicken crab. I, I, I always. <laughs> it's so have, funny hearing I, that name. It's I always have really funny. That one. That's the one I always use. Like some people have a favorite, you know, like, no, we all have favorites. <laughs> that one's mine. Hands down. That one's mine. And it works so well. Everything eats crap. <laughs> but yeah. That's pretty much the stack I always have in the car. Cool. Um, I've got some from kids can fish. Ah, <laughs> are you excited for that? I'm very excited. This is going to air after the tournament though, but is it? it and yeah, it'll air. Yeah. The, Cause the tournament's Friday. We're it's Monday. We're driving in a couple days. <laughs> But I'm excited to go. Are you? I'm very excited. Yeah. What What are you hoping for this year? Like placing wise? Well, just in general. I mean, I hope to get at least third place. <laughs> <laughs> I want to at least score. All right. Well, this year we should do a lot better. You're... My God, I hope so. I didn't get anything last year. <sighs> last year, hell, that baby red I got, we didn't even know it was there. You still got the smallest fish. You were the king of the smalls. <laughs> I am the king of the smalls. Hopefully I will still be the king of the smalls. After you better this. be. I, I know. It, Keep your title. The pressure's on, man. <laughs> Got to get a cape and a little, whatchamacallit, staff. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, we should have picked one up. We should have done that. We totally should have. Uh, Gonna have to get one on our way. Do it just like you. Totally know, will. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I'll, I'll, if I do it again, I will. I will do Hamilton on the way. <laughs> I, I promise you that. Um, a technique that is a lock solid favorite. Who has that? Still Kids Can Fish. I've got three questions from them. Oh, uh, a technique that's rock solid. Mm-hmm. I love the throwing into the waves. So if I can see the white foam, I'm throwing into it where it crashes. 
because I know that current that after it crashes is moving up all the coquinas and other stuff that's underneath it, and the fish are going to swim by to come eat that. So I'll always throw into where the wave is white and foamy after the crash. That one you can't fail. And then with a lure, uh, fast retrieve, and then slow retrieve. I'll change the technique up depending on what I'm targeting. And I learned that one from Tim still of uh, Beach Bum Lures. Uh, that made a huge difference in my lure game. Did I ask you a technique you will never lose again? I'll never use again? Not no. lose, use, sorry. No, you didn't, but I will happily answer that. My bad. Uh, I will never use again. Um, phew, that's a tough <laughs> one, actually. My first thought would be the one, that like braid thing that you said with the... The braid to the rig? Yeah. Yeah, because I don't do it anymore. I mean, that one's probably a good <laughs> one. Um, yeah, I think that, and then maybe... Uh, trying to get creative getting like cutesy with certain oh i remember do you remember the fish glass piece when i was using beads remember when i was playing with uh, beads yeah. from walmart and i bought the little fish one i was like oh look at that i was so fishy. sad when we lost it <laughs> you were i was really sad of all the rigs it I was lose, so cute it was um that's one thing i will never do again i will not get creative with walmart uh, glass beads from, the, really cute, from the craft section, yet I still have all the damn things <laughs> sitting in that organizer. Didn't have any other fish in that one. I actually bought another one just hoping to find that stupid did fish. Did you not? I did not. No. I'm willing to bet I could just go on Amazon right now and find some. Well, yeah, you can. I did. I just didn't want to spend it because I'm <laughs> thrifty, also known as cheap. But Which you is gotta, why we go to Walmart. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes. Or we go to Michael's when, the, you know, there's the 40% off sale because, mm -hmm. you know. Don't let your mother free and let my girls. <laughs> or you, for that matter. You two together. You two are dangerous going we, into We don't this. talk about that. We don't. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> I mean, all we went in there was... We went to Hobby Lobby for my mask, right? Uh, Well, amongst other places, but yes. I meant, like, directly for the actual mask, not, like, the decorations. Oh. And yet I still got beads, <laughs> some sort of glue, because mm -hmm. I needed that and so much more mm -hmm. when all I went there was for a mask. Mm -hmm. Welcome to adulthood. <laughs> or in other words, ADHD. Yeah. Oh, that's actually, yeah, well, actually, yeah, actually, I could buy that one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, that, that just, that happens. Well, before we move on to the next question, then let's knock on another bait check. It is the second bait check of the episode. Hopefully you caught a bunch of fish after listening to this. You're doing fine. You're just out there crushing it. Life's good. You're just, everything's awesome. No dancing and singing. I see you. I see you. This bait check is being brought to you by DS Custom Tackle. DSCustomTackle.com. The Delaware team, they do great stuff. They've got you hooked up for everything for rigs, floats, beads, hooks, uh, teasers, different types of lures. They got it all. And if you're into rig making or you're a rig maker and you want to get into the wholesale game and try to find a supplier, yeah, they got you covered there too. They got one of my favorite rigs. It's old Barry's rig. Yeah, you know, Barry. Gotta love him. The old sand flea glow in the dark monster. Yeah, it's dangerous. It does things. It catches fish. Right there on the website. Great stuff. DSCustomTackle.com. Great place. Great people. Real good gear. All right. What else you got for me here, kid? I've got one more from Kids Can Fish. Okay. What is your favorite YouTuber? Yes, I laughed when I saw that. Justin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Reed Fishing is always my favorite YouTuber. He's my, my best fishing buddy. <laughs> you do go fishing with him I, often. I do. I do. I always love seeing the girls. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you, you do well with the girls. They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, Justin, I, I very much so enjoy his channel. Um, I actually don't watch YouTube much anymore. I, I really, I, I enjoyed it for a while, but... Uh, I still follow all of them. Yes, you are a YouTube <laughs> watching fool. I've seen the analytics on art. Okay, a lot of it nowadays is mostly just stuff for games that I need advice for. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Shush. It's not your... It's no longer the BTS and what was the other stuff? I don't know. Uh. Okay, no. I've basically gone away from BTS now. That's true. I've just started watching gaming videos more. Yeah, that explains it. And you've been watching coding stuff. A little bit, not a lot on YouTube. Uh, but, you know, in near defense, I will say you had your BTS phase, but thankfully you're in your baby metal phase. <laughs> uh, and normal metal phase. You are in your little metal phase. I'm, I'm, I'm not sad that's about always, that. That's always that. fun to listen to, like on Tuesdays when I'm on my way to Lyrical <laughs> and we're just listening to metal in the car. Then I get out and go dance to a Lyrical song. <laughs> 
It's funny because I have hip hop right after that and just like three different genres that are so different from each other. You're welcome. You're well rounded <laughs> in the music world, dude. That's what that's what you I've need. I've got so many different things. You do. You're a busy person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one is from Brian Rowe. Is that how you say it? Uh huh. Okay. Um, I've got four questions. How long have you been surf fishing for? Two, three, three years. Twenty, Swinny, Samsonite. Yeah, three years. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, I had to think about it. We've been here three. Yeah, I've been surf fishing for three years. Started around like twenty twenty one, right? 2020, we were, we're right after we moved in. Yeah. Because we got here three days before Sally hit, and then Sally hit. Then I went to Half Hitch, bought all my gear. The only way I remember when we moved in is because it was a little bit before my birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long have we been here? Three? Four years? Three. Three? Yeah. Three. My brain wasn't burning again. <laughs> Math is hard. Math is hard. <laughs> <laughs> Math is very hard. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, three years. Cool. Um, what is your favorite species to target? Oddly, it's bluefish. I expected you to say pompano. I know. Everyone expects pompano because they're here. But but now bluefish and Spanish, I'd say, are my favorites because um, I go after them more with lures. And I love the fact that they, <laughs> when they bite, they bite hard. So <laughs> it's fun. My two are definitely whiting and redfish. Whiting for the taste because... Whiting tacos are good. Mm, whiting tacos, delicious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the redfish for the fight because that's really fun. Yeah, that was a good one. You're gonna be in. You're gonna be in for some. You know these redfish in Georgia. Oh, I know. Can be up to fifty plus inches. I saw Liam's. That was yeah. That was pretty big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This year, I think we're gonna, you're gonna see a lot more catches. Uh, there's a lot of different things from last year to this year that we're not gonna have to deal with. The sticks. Remember how far up we were? Pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, we're not going to have to deal with that. It's not a super moon, so we don't have a bright moon. We've got perfect tides, all that stuff. So it's actually going to work out pretty well this time? I mean, yeah. I mean, it's going to be more competition because more people are going to catch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a minor detail. <laughs> hey, ready for the next one? Yeah, go ahead, honey. A bucket list pl- place to fish. We've already done this, haven't we? Uh, yeah. Like yeah. you said, Australia. Australia, yeah, Panama. Yeah, those I two. I want to go ice fishing. You want to go ice fishing? Yeah, it mm. looks cool. Well, you mean your Uncle Luke would take you? He, he he'd, would. He'd probably love hearing the fact that you want to go ice fishing. <laughs> Come on, let's go, kid. <laughs> you know, I'll send I you, think it'd be fun. I'll send you to Maine for Aunt... I'll go to let you hang out with your Aunt Dottie and your Uncle oh, Luke. Good Lord. <laughs> don't leave me. Oh, no. I'll, I'll, I'll just... You should go up there for a winter. Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah, you, no, I shouldn't. you should. I should not. Uh-uh. not? I'm going to freeze to death. You might. I'm going to get trapped in the snow and freeze. No, he wouldn't let you. Plus, I'd, I'd kill him if he lost you. So, and I know yeah, he wouldn't fair. lose you. He loves you too much. He like <laughs> you are you are too much fun to him. Yeah, you know, riding four wheelers and doing all the fun stuff. He I haven't loves. done it in a while. No, not since we haven't we haven't been back since then. So, well, we did it when I was like what, not even that old. Like I want to say eight. Yeah. When we were traveling, and I was on, I was in the four wheeler. Sorry, my brain isn't mm-hmm. working. Yeah. Do you remember that when we were with like Sway and and all? Um, yeah, we went Uncle out Travis to the desert. And everyone. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, that was good times. Akatia. Akatia Wells. I didn't remember the name of the place. Yeah, it's it's easily forgettable. It's a desert place. <laughs> I don't know if we answered this one. What? Bucket list fish to catch. We did. What was it? I forgot. Rooster. <laughs> oh, yeah, the rooster. Um, I've got one from Chris Benfer. I think okay. that's how you say it. Okay. Looks like it. What inspired you to start the show, and did you ever imagine it would have been... Bleh. Imagine it would have the impact it has. I did not I imagine that, today. actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I knew that I wanted to get into this aspect of... I wanted to get into content creation. Um, I, I thought I could do something different. Um, but the YouTube market was completely saturated. And, you know, like Matt from Bama Beach Bomb, he, he had the market cornered. There was no... Especially in this area, it was like, well, why would I compete against him? And him and Tony... You know, Brad, all those guys, they got huge channels. And I was like, all right, I'm just going to get lost in the mix. Um, and then, uh, you remember Miss Jacqueline? I don't know. I if think you, so. Okay. So, um, <laughs> but Jacqueline and I did podcasts before, and I knew the podcast world a little bit, and I felt pretty comfortable in it. But I, so I searched to see if there were any surf fishing podcasts, and there weren't. Um, not on my initial search. There were some out there, but apparently I looked it up the wrong way. There were none in this area, and then I also went back to something I learned in the Marine Corps of, you know, you got different learners. Mm-hmm. You've got visual learners. 
<laughs> yeah. Me. Yeah, you are. I'm definitely a visual you learner. You are a visual learner. You've got audio learners. They listen. And then you I got, don't think I can do that very well. It depends. I'm, I'm an audio kind of. And then you got kinesthetic. So people that... I have no clue what that is. I'm going to explain it. You know, <laughs> they're the ones that kind of... they. They learn through doing, but mixture. So, like, you know, I could te- talk to you while you're on the treadmill, and you retain in knowledge that way. Mm-hmm. So, audio, visual, kinesthetic, three. Well, YouTube's got you covered on audio, or I'm sorry, on visual. They got the video thing hands down. A little bit on the audio, but most people are going to want to watch, which is a downside of a podcast. I'm usually playing my games, and most of it is audio that I hear. All right, so see, you do. You are an audio learner like that, but you're also a visual learner. You can. You're also kinesthetic. You 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 didn't do all three. Um, me personally, I am definitely a learner through audio and kinesthetic. That's my primary. So the podcast world didn't have much for this, and I I realized I could do a couple of different things. I could either sit here and flap my jibs and be like, <laughs> "Hey, listen to me talk." And uh, but I realized that a better medium would be to interview people, have them share their stories and their knowledge. And it would probably help more people, and it has. I didn't expect that. From Australia to you know South South Africa, Florida, South been? Africa. Yeah, I did one episode with them. That was a good one. I know you don't listen to my shows; they're too long. I listened to like one of them. I don't know which one, but I listened to one of them. Probably the intro that was like twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I mean, but your episodes are like an hour long. They are. Hour and a half a lot of times. Yeah, jeez. Well, think about it. How many questions I ask these people. Then again, I do listen to a lot of podcasts that have hour long episodes. There you go. So, um, but by interviewing all these people, I was able to get knowledge from all these different places. Cabo, California, the mm-hmm. Carolinas, Florida, Texas, you know, and it made me realize that Fishing is fishing. It, it, we all can do the exact same thing. Whether I go from here to Oregon, we go up there to fish, I'll be successful because of the stuff that I've learned doing this show and talking to people. I may not be able to nail it on the first try, but I've got a lot of things in the bag that people have talked me about, and it worked. And then when I started interviewing, um, what was it, guides, it turned into something even more because now it became a chance for guides to tell their stor- story. 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 As H-T-O-R-Y. Leather, <laughs> bound books. Rich mahogany. Um, it got the chance for them to tell their story and give them some advertising. So if you know people wanted to come down to, I don't know, Myrtle Beach, you know, they wanted to go down there, mm-hmm. they had two guides to choose from. Now they had an episode that they could listen to to get an idea. Or if they couldn't get a guide, they could at least have an idea of how to fish. So it's done great things in my opinion it really has and i've enjoyed every single minute of doing this it's been probably one of the more fun things to to do cool um <laughs> cool story bro <laughs> <laughs> i'm really not trying to say it like that it's all good honey what you got um closing questions yeah go for it um what knowledge would you give to a brand new angler be patient you're not going to... You definitely needed to tell me that a few times. <laughs> yes, yes, I have. I was very impatient. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you were that impatient. You were just... I mean, you're a kid. It's not expected for you to be, you know, lockstep focused like a, an adult. You know, we're using it as an escape. You're, you're yeah. just with dad. <laughs> <laughs> patience. Uh, patience is key. You know, don't, don't think you're going to go out there... You know, catching a monster fish your first time. Go out with realistic, realistic expectations after talking to the tackle shop. Know what's around you and target that. Start I expect, small. I expected to catch a little baby fish. You did. <laughs> yeah. well, actually, when we moved here, when I started fishing, you were snorkeling and you saw a pompano in the water. I know. They were chasing my feet. Mm-hmm. And, you cl- and you told me about yeah, it. But Jesus scared out of me. Didn't even know what they were. <laughs> Now that I know, I'm like, oh, okay. They were definitely Pompano. I can still remember what they look like. Yeah. A little bit of yellow. Yeah. A, a lot of silver. <laughs> well, it could have been a little Jack of Balls. That's true. They didn't look like it, though. They were probably Pomp. Yeah, they look more like Pompano. So, the tiny ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, be very patient, and everything will work out. It'll be fine. Um, just, you know, go out and have some fun. These are going to be weird because I didn't edit this part. Like, I didn't. This was a copy paste. So, these questions are going to be all over the map. I'm trying to read them in the way I would read them. <laughs> you do that. Please do. <laughs> I'm really trying. No, you're doing. Dude, you are seriously doing great. Like, once this, you know, once I hand off the reins to you to run your own podcast, you got this. 
Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could ever run my own podcast. Oh, you could. I don't think it'd be very successful. Why? I don't know. I mean, you have some podcasts that are really successful, but they've also got different things that they use, different platforms. Mm-hmm. You've got TikTok. You've got this. Mm-hmm. What else do you use? I you use Twitter. I don't use Twitter. I thought you did. No, mom likes Twitter. Mom I don't like Twitter. 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 Twitter is a... Formerly known as Twitter. It's X. It's, <laughs> it's no longer X now. Twitter. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> um, I've, I was scarred from Twitter on recruiting duty. I'll never use Twitter ever, ever in my life mm-hmm. again. Um, I use Facebook, Insta. You use YouTube. I do use YouTube, eh, much to my begrudgingness. Yes, I use YouTube. Uh, let's see here. Tiki Talk. I absolutely use the Tiki Talk. You do. <laughs> I, like, I like Tiki Talk. But see, I think you would be successful. I mean... If I were to find a couple different platforms well, here, I could use. Let me ask you this. What do you mean by successful? Successful by meeting my goals and actually making good content for people and having them actually enjoy it and not being obsessed with it just for views and listens and things like that. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to meet my goals and make people happy. Okay. You know what? Hmm. What do you think I do? Make people happy, meet your goals. <laughs> <laughs> I have a saying when it comes to the show. I don't have the following that a lot of these guys do. I don't have the following Justin has or Tony or Matt. I don't even know what they have. Uh, Tony, I think, is over 100,000. Isabel's probably closer to Jeez. half a million. Jeez. If, he's not, if he hasn't crossed that yet, it'll be soon. Jack's got something like you know, two, 200,000. I don't have that following. That's a lot. That is. <laughs> My following is probably somewhere around 2,000, maybe. Well, you're going to grow more as time goes on. True. But I don't worry about that. Mm-hmm. It'll grow as it, you know, as people learn about this. It's fine. My honest way I say that I've done something, if I helped one person, then I was successful. Yeah. The rest of it is wins. I mean, it's just going to be wins upon wins. Mm-hmm. So. If you can help one person, then you've done good. But that's my goal. That's not you. That's, you know, that's me. So. My, goal, my goal would be to help a lot of people. There you go. By, like, spreading out information to everybody that I can. All right. There you go. Maybe Doing we, content. Maybe we have to make you a podcast of oh some boy. Kind. I don't know what you want to do, but we'll go. We'll, we'll play with that sometime. You, you would have to help me with that. No, it's not like I don't know what I'm... Well, I mean, I kind of I mean, you would have to give me some tips and tricks. <laughs> hey I got that. Um, what do you think has been the reason for a surge to surf fishing? I almost said surf to surf fishing. <laughs> uh, this is actually Blake Hunter's question. He's the one that came up with this, and I've loved asking it. I think social media. Um, that I, would I, make sense. I think social media has really brought it up to the forefront, and then people realizing when they're on vacation, you know, a bass fisherman comes down here to hang out. He can, he or she, sorry. <laughs> I was bad. They can come down and fish and also hang with their family at the water. Two birds, one stone. So I, I think social media has been the big push for that. I love how you could very clearly hear that little check. Check. <laughs> These mics are sensitive, dude. Yeah, apparently they are. Well, you're using my old one, uh, the headset mic. How old mic. is it? That one is as old as the show, so that's what? Three two years Two years. Two years. Yep, podcast actually just turned two years old today. That's cool. Yeah, I didn't post about it yet. I probably should, but anyway. The audio doesn't sound bad for it being that old. No, no, it's just, you know, again, you know, you're on that one, and here <laughs> I am on a sure mic, you know, it's all about growth and change. Do you have any final thoughts or tips you'd like to share with our listeners who are interested in getting into surf fishing? Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but I also love to say it. <laughs> Follow, you know, check out some of the old episodes. They'll help you. Definitely take a look at social media. Look at local fishing groups. Um, with that being said, take local fishing groups with a grain of salt. There's always going to be a jerk in there, and they suck. Unless you're part of our fishing group, in which case we really slam that down there at Panhandle <laughs> Surf Fishing. We do very violently, and you will get booted from the group. Oh, dang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't we don't play around. Um, yeah, apparently not. You know, follow up on the social media one. Take a look at some YouTubers. Look, at, you know biggest one i can really say is if you're gonna go fish somewhere new and you want to really be successful pay the money yeah. and go out with a guide you're gonna learn so much in that four to five hours that you're gonna catch you, and you're gonna catch fish and you're gonna be able to pick their brain because they're gonna talk to you did you do that or no i was going to with mr mike then mr mike became my friend <laughs> <laughs> and he just gives you advice all the time yeah yeah it was kind of like you know what you're doing i'm like uh, i'm just faking it till i make it bro but uh, yeah, and then he became a friend of mine, and next thing I know, you know, we're all sharing tips, and Mike and I are doing a show on the Panhandle Fishing Report. You know, it, it's one thing after another. 
advice for beginners for someone who's start who's starting out in surf fishing what is the one piece of advice you'd give them to set set them on the right path do not waste a bunch of money on expensive gear you don't need to uh i mean you can walk in why do they hate saying these words <laughs> um i mean you can walk into walmart and go pick up a starter kit for a 12 footer 10 footer 11 foot 12 foot rod and spool it up with some fishing line and you could be successful uh, I definitely recommend going to your tackle shop and doing that. And really go into your tackle shop too. I mean, that that's really the starting point. That's what I did. I walked right into half hitch and basically told them, Hey, I just moved here. I'm new. I want to do this. Hook me up. And they did, you know, they didn't run me through the ringer. They, they actually asked me questions, helped me out with what I wanted to do and stuff like that. And that, that helped out. So yeah, start there. Well, it's been one hour. We're almost done. Yeah, it has. It's been an hour. So we're going to knock out a bait check. The last one. I wish you guys could see AJ. She's just rolling her hand here like she's reeling a fish. <laughs> I love it. Oh, this kid. This last bait check is being brought to you by the Kids Can Fish Foundation. Kidscanfish.net is the website to go take a look at. Kids Can Fish is an organization that takes charitable donations and takes these kids out fishing with fishing camps on knowledge with how to fish, how to throw cast nets, freshwater, saltwater, lots of this. And then all the camps that these kids go to, they come back with the gear. They don't just go there and use it. They actually get to take it home. So if your kid goes to a fishing one, they're going to probably leave with a rod and reel. If they go to the cast net one, they're going to go home with a cast net. All these programs are put together by your donations. And at the end of the year, coming up here, like Abby and I were talking about, we're going to the big tournament. That's the big fundraiser. All that money gets thrown back in that goes into that, goes to all the raffles. All that money goes back into these camps to help people help get these kids fishing. They have a great saying. It's not official. I love it, but I'm going to say it anyway. More tackle boxes, less Xboxes. They're really shaping the future for these kids. So they do good things. Kidscanfish.net. Love you guys. You're doing great things. Please keep it up. I've got four more questions. Ooh, four more. <laughs> Sadly, we're almost done. Yeah, I know. We're going to have to do a video with me on screen at one point or another. Sure, we can do it. I mean, we'll see how this one goes. <laughs> I have a feeling. <laughs> After this one. I don't think that, this, I mean, I personally am like, I, I am very shocked that people wanted me to do this episode. And then everybody's like, I'll interview you, I'll interview you. I'm like, No. There's only one person I want to interview do, me. I'm going to let my kid do it. Yep. <laughs> I, knew, I knew when I was going to do this episode, I knew I wanted you to interview me. I knew I did. Well, I'm happy to. I'm glad I got you to pry away from the computer for a little while. <laughs> I haven't got anything planned other than hanging out with a friend. So, And I told them I'd be back in like two hours. I so. will take any time I can with you while I can. I know I'm going to lose you in a few more years. So, Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, are there any fellow surf anglers, mentors, or authors that, um, or individuals, sorry, who have inspired your journey and deserve a shout out? Uh, I nailed a couple there, but Paul Vanslet, him, his book, really, uh, it was a fun read, but that also gave me some guidance and tips there that really, uh, that helped me out. Brett Burford with Fish Bites has given me a lot of tips. Chip. The sinker guy has given me a ton. Matt Poole from Ninja Tackle has, oh, dude, that guy was, he was the first person I reached out to when I started writing. And he has been nothing but supportive all throughout my entire journey with knowledge from the East Coast and then how to use my gear right and how to do better <laughs> with that. It's been huge. Justin has done major with me by teaching me how to cast. His stuff really changed it. Everyone I've interviewed on this podcast has been a huge influence in me and helping me out. So. Um, there's a thousand of you I'd love to name by name, but it would take us another hour. But <laughs> just know if I've fished with you and had a conversation with you at any point in time, you have influenced me in some way, shape or form. And, uh, Courtney, your favorite person. Yes. I definitely looked over it, <laughs> looked over my dad. And, uh, Courtney's, Courtney's helped us both. Yeah. Courtney's lovely. She, and I know she loves you to death. So does Bambi. Definitely. <laughs> but if any of you you know have had spammy. anything you're gonna see her soon uh if any of you have ever had a conversation with me really uh you have done something you have influenced me in some way shape or form i do owe you this thank you thank you thank you thank you you have made me a better angler um a better host a better person and i appreciate every morsel of it so uh, this shoe fits a lot of people and please wear it thank you for everything
Where can our listeners find more of your content, learn from your experiences, and stay updated on your on your surf fishing adventures? Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, YouTube, you use Instagram, Tiki Talk, yeah, loosely. <laughs> I'm not I didn't know you use it. Yeah, um, definitely finding demosurfishing dot com. That web, uh, the home site that I have, the webpage, it's got a lot of stuff on there. It's got the podcast. It's got blogs. It's got my tackle box. It's a uh, it's a whole section of cool stuff. So take a look at the website. There's a lot on there. As we come to an end, what is a message you'd like our listeners to take away from this conversation about surf fishing? It's a lot of fun. And it can bring you and your family closer together. It's worth your time uh, to do. So get out there and go fish. Get a little relaxation and life back. It's it's good. And our last question, what's next for you? <laughs> Taking you fishing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. We got some tournaments coming up. October's our busy month I'm for so tournaments. I'm so excited. I know. You, I've got so much going on in, you, in October. You do. We do. It's going to be a lot. <laughs> fishing with you, fishing these tournaments, hanging out, enjoying that work. No, it's pretty much big and keeping on with the podcast. Yeah, so I owe you a thank you, <laughs> dude. Seriously, you have made fishing more fun. Like, and I try to watching you grow from when you started. What was it? Was it nine and ten? Well, no, even before that, because I took you fishing when you were a little kid when we were out in Cali. I still remember the first fish that I caught, though. Because my first thought was when we were with Uncle Jason and Aunt Audra, uh-huh. and I caught a sunfish. Uh-huh. I don't know how I remember that, but I do. Yeah. That was your first one there, and then... I remember catching the... Wasn't it a rainbow trout? You caught a rainbow trout. I was so proud of that thing, and it was so tiny. It was. But you still caught it. You baby. <laughs> pretty fish, though, isn't it? It was really pretty. Yep, you've caught that, and look at it. Since you've moved here, you've caught pompano. I've a, caught a lot more. <laughs> red, a whiting, uh, Spanish... Well, I think that's pretty much the big ones you've caught so far. What was the one that I caught on accident? I forgot the name. The Spanish? No. The Black and White. Oh, the Sheep's Head. Sheep's Head, thank you. Yeah, yeah. The sheep goatfish? <laughs> Where did that come from? Sheep, goat, bat. I mean, Whatever. Same here, there, same, same, thing. same. <laughs> but thank you, kiddo. You've made me a better angler, and you made me feel awesome as a dad every time you let me take you out fishing. So thank you so much for letting me do that stuff with you. <laughs> I love you. I love you, too. All right, well... That does it, ladies and gentlemen. You made it. You made it through the whole Finding Demo Surf Fishing podcast to interview me one, and uh, my my monkey knocked it out. You, you did a good job, dude. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we appreciate you. Uh, if this episode helped you out, don't forget to send it out to uh, whoever you can on social media. We're here for you. This is what we do. I enjoy it. New episodes every week. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to Finding Demo Surf Fishing. I'm out of here. <laughs>